My hope for each resident of our great city is that you are safe and healthy. For those of you who have been vaccinated and even boosted, thank you for doing your part to help us move forward. And for those of you who have decided to not be vaccinated yet, please consider doing so. It will help reduce our risk for severe illness, hospitalization, and possible death. And it will help lessen the hardship that our hospitals face each day. We've lost far too many lives to this virus. I'm confident, though, that we will bounce back from COVID-19. I also want to express my sincere gratitude to the Allen County Department of Health, our local health care professionals, and essential employees at businesses across Fort Wayne. You are the true heroes. You know, we've experienced a lot since March of 2020, but through it all, I truly believe that the best is yet to come for the city of Fort Wayne. We've had a lot of successes in 2021, and I'm looking forward to what we have planned for 2022. For example, the, the business climate is as strong as it's ever been in our city. There's no question the pandemic has impacted some businesses, but we're seeing tremendous growth as well. Private investment in large and small businesses totaled more than $463 million in 2021, with 16 companies expanding in or relocating to Fort Wayne. 1,700 jobs were created and 1,500 jobs were retained. Amazon, uh, Dryers Ice Cream, Acadia Healthcare, intellectual technology are just a few examples of how Fort Wayne has become a true live, work, and play leader in the Midwest, quite frankly, nationally as well. Speaking of Amazon, its fulfillment center along US 30 will create 1,000 full-time jobs, and it's expected to be open later this year. And the Dryers ice cream expansion, it's more than $145 million worth of investment and it'll add over 150 new jobs. I personally want to thank our Redevelopment Commission and Redevelopment Department as they played vital roles in these unique and complex projects. In addition, high growth, innovation, and inclusion are the key components of the new Allen County Together Plan. It will further assist our collective efforts to be a community of choice for economic development opportunities. This plan is led by Greater Fort Wayne, and it will set our progressive economic path for the next decade. It's no wonder that we're the fastest growing metro in the Great Lakes region. You know, we're an award-winning city too. Certainly one of our biggest accomplishments in 2021 was being chosen as an All-America city for the fourth time by the National Civic League. We're also the third best run city in the country. We're the second most affordable place to live in the country and the seventh top emerging housing market. These are legitimate recognitions from Wallet Hub, from US News and World Report, from the Wall Street Journal and Realtor.com. You know, I mention these accolades to you because they do matter. It's what individuals, families, and businesses are looking for when seeking a place to live, raise a family, start a career, or launch a business. The time and energy we put into enhancing and adding quality of life and quality of place amenities have truly put us on the map. There's no question, my friends, Fort Wayne is on a roll. From entertainment and hospitality offerings to sports, the arts, and education, we are making a difference. Simply put, Fort Wayne is the place to be. Engagement, innovation, and performance. These have been the three pillars of my administration. And we're looking to see that all of these continue to work as we move along with major initiatives that have been not only completed, but are making significant progress. For example, the Bradley is open as our newest downtown hotel. The unique style and atmosphere created by Vera Bradley co-founder Barbara Brackard and Providence Hotels is second 
to none. And just announced a few days ago, a project to be known as the Pearl will be coming to downtown through a partnership between the city of Fort Wayne and Surak Enterprises. It's a $50 million mixed use development to include 35,000 square feet of commercial and event space, as well as nearly 80 housing units. This site is just west of the Bradley and south of Perfection Bakeries. Then there is the Ashbury project that will serve as the corporate headquarters for Star Financial Bank. It's moving along nicely with an opening scheduled for the first quarter of 2023. This $43 million seven story building will also feature commercial and retail space and a much needed parking garage. We also have the Lutheran Downtown Hospital now that opened just a few months ago. This significant and modern investment is essential as the need for health care services continues to be of utmost importance to our residents. Finally, the landing continues to grow and succeed with restaurants, commercial and retail offerings, and housing. In fact, just a few weeks ago, plans were unveiled for a nearly $12 million investment at the landing to historically preserve and renovate three signature buildings, adding new commercial and retail space along with 21 additional housing units. Work will begin there later this year, and it's expected to generate more than uh, about 100 construction jobs and 80 full-time jobs. We've partnered with the Model Group on this initiative, and they've been a trusted partner, and we're thrilled about them working with us on this next phase. But there's more. As Indianapolis-based Barrett and Stokely Development Firm has two projects in downtown now totaling more than $150 million. First, the six-story riverfront at Promenade Park development is well underway. In fact, the 900-space parking garage that was scheduled to open in the first quarter of this year. It will have more than 200 apartments, seven townhomes, and 45,000 square feet of commercial space that are expected to be completed by the end of this year. It's an investment of nearly $90 million, right next to Promenade Park in the heart of our fastest growing area of public-private partnerships. And last week, it was announced that Swiss Re will become an anchor tenant at the riverfront at Promenade Park. Swiss Re is a global risk management firm that has nearly 200 employees. Barrett & Stokely's second project is the lofts at Headwaters Park which is progressing with soil removal and site work right now. Actual construction on this nearly $68 million project is anticipated for later this year. It's also a six-story mixed-use building that will feature 217 apartments, 15 townhomes, and 12,000 square feet of commercial space, and another parking garage with 651 spaces. That garage will open in the summer of 2023 and the rest of the, uh, the development in 2024. Our commitment to the rivers is going to continue with more public spaces to complement the success of the park and more private ventures are yet to come. Phase two of our riverfront initiative will include the creation of more trails, new boat docks, more activity in recreation areas, and another section of the Tree Canopy Trail with river overlooks. We could see construction begin on those elements yet this year. It's evident that our once dormant downtown is alive and well, with $1 billion of public and private investment in the last decade. In fact, we anticipate probably another billion dollars in projects over the next decade. Another major project that's making noticeable progress is Electric Works. The West Campus will open this fall with a vibrant mix of creative office, retail, entertainment, dining, healthcare, education, and community event space. It will also include the corporate headquarters for Do It Best and the region's first food hall and public market. And phase two is beginning this year that will feature housing units and early childhood learning center, a wellness center, and commercial space. 
The economic impact of Electric Works Campus should be immense and will continue to support job growth and quality of place amenities. It's no accident that good fiscal stewardship has put Fort Wayne in the position of our current successes. Our balanced budget for 2022 will help us meet the most urgent needs while also setting aside funds to address any future financial uncertainties. We've been able to weather the COVID-19 storm financially and have sufficient cash reserves now to respond to additional emergencies. Our city controller and his team in partnership with city council and my office deserve a lot of the credit for managing complex budgets in a way that protects taxpayers and ensures vital services that they continue to be provided in the midst of this pandemic. I can assure you that Fort Wayne's fiscal health is strong. Time and time again, we hear from residents that it's critical to invest in resources such as our parks neighborhood infrastructure and public safety. And I can tell you with confidence that we're doing just that and the best is yet to come. Unquestionably, Fort Wayne's parks are the very best and we should be very proud of what we have. Park usage and programming continues to grow. Our parks serve as safe places for families and friends to gather and to exercise and learn new things and explore nature. So in fact, this year, we will see the completion of the design for the first phase of the Franke Park Renaissance project that will include a new entrance off of Goshen Avenue and a new Grand Park Pavilion. Another highlight this year will be the construction on Foster Park Pavilion number three, which features a roof replacement, renovations to the interior of the pavilion, and bringing new electrical service to the building. We're also going to have improvements at Lakeside, Crager, McMillan, Solomon Farm, and Weiser Parks. And our capital improvement program of providing $3 million in funding for our parks will continue in 2022. And this will build upon the more than 100 projects that we completed in 2021. Neighborhoods, unquestionably, are the backbone of any city. That's why we're going to invest a record $38.5 million in public works projects this year. We completed nearly $28 million of improvements in 2021 and have invested more than $200 million in our neighborhoods since the 2014 construction season. Streets, and roads, and sidewalks, and alleys, and bridges, they all have to be given a proper attention not only in our city as a whole, but certainly in all four quadrants of our city. The East Ludwig Road relocation and Bluffton Road uh, bridge repair are two major initiatives for this year. You'll also see concrete street repairs in seven neighborhoods, 16 concrete alley replacements, and seven sidewalk projects. We'll also continue to invest in repairing existing sidewalks throughout our community with a multitude of programs to make it easier for our residents. In addition, work on the Fort Wayne Veterans Memorial Bridge along Spiron Avenue near the old fort will commence this year. In partnership with NDOT, renovating the signature gateway will provide motorists and pedestrians with safe and innovative ways to navigate our city. I'm also grateful for the opportunity we have to honor and recognize all branches of our military. The work we're doing in the Public Works Division helps define our ability to be recognized as a community that has a safe and effective transportation system. Businesses and families look to that as a key indicator of where they want to invest their resources. We also have an award-winning trails network consisting of nearly 129 miles of trails with 98 miles inside city limits. This year, we're planning to construct another four miles, and highlights will include Buckner Park, Hannah Street, Summit Park, Lake Avenue Trails, and the Urban Trail. We're also in a position to have four and a half million dollars set aside for trails beginning this year through 2024. 
As a result, we'll be able to complete priority corridor trails in every quadrant of our city. You know, improving what is visible is certainly important, but we must also maintain what we have underground with our water, sewer, and stormwater infrastructure. Last year alone, city utilities led $92 million worth of upgrades. This year, our neighborhoods will see $110 million in system enhancements. For example, water main work will occur in such areas as Centerhurst, Tamarack, and Crestwood Colony, and stormwater and drainage projects will take place in Lincolndale and Blackhawk areas, as well as along North Anthony Boulevard, Vance Avenue, and Hessen Castle Road. And we can't forget about the largest investment in Fort Wayne's history with the continuation of the Deep Rock Tunnel Project that will help protect our rivers, our neighborhoods, and the quality of life for generations to come. City so Utilities is also leading the way in environmental issues and energy efficiencies by equipping and training future professionals through our proactive education and internship programs. City government must hit on all cylinders to make the most difference for residents, neighborhoods, and businesses. A good example of that is public safety. The accomplishments from last year and the goals for this year demonstrate how seriously we take our work to protect the public as a top priority of my administration. Overall crime is down 6% and violent crime is down nearly 37%. The Fort Wayne Police Department has added 100 body cameras and this year's recruit class will bring our staffing level up to 485 officers. Our police officers responded to 140,000 calls for service in 2021 and we were able to take 850 firearms off the streets that had been obtained illegally. Another major accomplishment in 2021 was the addition of two social workers to the police department. Darcy Robbins and Samantha Taylor are focusing on community outreach and building connections and being part of the hope and recovery team to get help for people going through problems with drugs. Our fire division is also committed to protecting all of us. Last year, they responded to more than 27,000 calls for service. And we added 14 new recruits in 2021 who will obtain an advanced life support certification within their first two years on the department. This year, the fire department will break ground on a new fire station, number 14. It's gonna be at Reed Road and State Boulevard. And they will have at least 24 recruits begin training as part of the 94th recruit class. Over a million dollars in grant funding will assist our firefighters this year with new radios and rescue tools and training. And two new fire engines will be put into service this year. It's vital that the residents, businesses, and visitors feel safe in our community. The collective work that we're doing should provide comfort that Fort Wayne is a safe city that's moving in the right direction. Now, you know, animal uh, care and control is also part of our public safety team and their innovative approaches make Fort Wayne a nationally recognized leader in caring for pets. An expanded foster program, more educational options for children and record adoptions in 2021 show why we're a pet friendly community and why it's so important. Being a safe city increases our ability to shine in the ongoing development of our community as well. The first single family housing addition in Southeast Fort Wayne in 30 years is coming to fruition. Roosevelt Reserve near Tillman and Heston Castle Roads will have market rate housing with 263 <coughs> lots on 126 acres of land. And we're working to bring a full service grocery store to Southeast Fort Wayne to provide healthy food options in an area that's currently defined as a food desert. We hope to be in a position to have a location announced soon and possible construction and opening, if not this year, early next year. 
Our focus on people extends to our cultural offerings too, and I'm proud of our community's support and appreciation for the arts. Recently, in fact, $3 million in legacy funding was set aside to assist with plan improvements to the Arts United Center. It's a significant piece in our overall plan to expand and enhance programming in Fort Wayne through private and public funding. Investing in these areas makes our community and region stronger and more viable in a global and competitive economy. So far today, I've shared with you many success stories and where we're headed as a city. I do recognize, though, that we have significant challenges in our community. There's no question that garbage and recycling collection is one of those. It has not met our standards, and I'll take responsibility for that. I owe it to you to provide the best customer service possible. And despite the rough times that we've had with solid waste services, I am optimistic about where we're headed. We're close now to an agreement with Red River's bankruptcy proceedings, an agreement that will ultimately allow the necessary time to hire a new contractor and have them on board by early summer. We're also working with the state legislature to change the law that mandates our current trash bidding process. By confronting these challenges and learning from them, they will help us advance as a city. Better days are ahead. You know, one of the things that we should be most proud of as a community is how we care about one another. We look out for each other through compassionate and meaningful actions. We are a people-focused community. For example, a recent high-trust partnership has been developed with Catholic Charities. Under the leadership of Dan Florin and his outstanding staff, we've been able to establish a Fort Wayne Community Identification Card Program. It's a proactive effort to recognize all citizens in our community through diversity, inclusion, and respect. As of mid-January, nearly 1,400 cards have been issued, and it's helping populations here that have challenges in obtaining other forms of photo identification to complete important tasks such as working with city services and banking, just to name a couple. In addition, Catholic Charities led the way to resettling nearly 90 refugees from Afghanistan to Fort Wayne. Now, this particular process is a very detailed and organized procedure, one with proper vetting protocols. But we are investing in lives, and I'm looking forward to positive outcomes. I'm also a big proponent of celebrating diversity and looking for ways to grow and learn new things about our citizens and how we can incorporate that into making Fort Wayne more open to change and idea generations. That's why I'm so encouraged by the United Front Initiative. It's brought more than 8,000 people and over 200 organizations together to have hard discussions and increase knowledge about cultures and implement best practice in the, in the areas of racial healing and equity, and education, and organizational transformation. I can't say enough about Dr. Pascal Lasambe and the United Front team who are leading the charge with innovative programming. I admire their, I, I admire their leadership and commitment and courage as they are pushing us to a better community. Truly, we're stronger when we're connected and working together to reach a common goal of understanding and unity. There's no question that Fort Wayne has come a long way. The state of our city is strong with no end in sight as the positive momentum continues and new investments keep coming. But we can't slow down and fall behind. We've worked too hard to earn our position as a leader, an example for others to follow. Cities across the country are looking to us now for guidance. We are a city like no other. As a fan of Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken, I'm reminded that as a community, choices have been now made that have set the course for our community's future. And instead of taking the path that was well-traveled and perhaps easier, 
we've taken the road less traveled. And it has made all the difference. We've successfully set ourselves apart from the rest. We've taken risks and we've benefited. There's no question it's a great time to be a part of building Fort Wayne. Truly, the best is yet to come. God bless you and God bless the city of Fort Wayne. Thank you.